Hi, my name is Selena. I'm 18 years old. Remember the summer after graduation, when school is behind you but adulthood hasn't started yet? For me, it was a chance to realize my dream. I always wanted to save people, but I didn't think that it would ruin my entire life. One time, my trainer asked me to take his place on duty. It was my first real assignment. I should have taken it seriously, but I was distracted by some guys on the pier. One of them had ripped abs and tattoos. A real bad boy. I was watching him. He started doing jumps into the water, but jumping from the pier was prohibited. I should have stopped him, but it was so cool. He was about to jump again. He did another backflip and disappeared into the water. I waited for him to surface, but it didn't happen. Everything inside me went cold. Oh no, I could be fired, or worse, put in prison. I started panicking and ran to him. I had to make my way through his group of friends. Their friend was drowning, and they just kept recording on their phones. It took me a few more minutes to swim to him. I couldn't see anything because the waves were making the water foam. Then, I noticed something dark under the pier. I swam over to it. He was unconscious next to one of the pier supports. He probably hit his head. I grabbed him and pulled him to the shore. I leaned over his face and realized that he wasn't breathing. He needed first aid immediately. I started panicking. People were gathering around and looking at me, expecting me to save him. I shouted for someone to call an ambulance. I started doing CPR so this guy could stay alive until medics arrived, but he still wasn't breathing. I realized that I had to start mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. I was really worried because his life was depending on me. I begged him to take a breath. Suddenly, he started coughing and spit water out on me. It was disgusting. But I was so happy. He was alive. The guy opened his eyes and looked at me. I didn't know what else I could do for him. Fortunately, the ambulance arrived quickly. I sat on the pier for a long time and thought about that boy. I still had his blood on my swimsuit. Now that he was safe, I thought about how tender his lips were. I didn't know that I would regret not letting him drown. The next day, I was afraid to go to work. I had messed up and was sure they were going to fire me. My trainer looked very angry. It turned out that he had been reprimanded because of me. After all, technically, it was his fault. He had dumped his work on the trainee. It seemed that I had gotten off easy. I decided to find out whether that guy was okay. His name was Chad. I saw him in the hospital bed, and my heart sank. His face was very pale, with black circles under his eyes. He looked very weak, but he opened his eyes and smiled at me. I was embarrassed and wanted to run away, but he asked me to come over to him. It was awkward for me, but I sat on the edge of the bed and took his hand. He thanked me for saving him, and I asked how he was feeling. We talked, and his gaze made me feel very uneasy. He had a look of doom in his eyes, but then it went away. Something was tormenting him. For a while, we were silent, and then I realized that he was crying. Yesterday, he was the coolest guy on the beach, but today he looked broken. I tried to cheer him up. I told him that this was nothing, and a new scar would only help his reputation as a bad boy. It hurt me to see him like that, and I wanted to help. A few minutes later, Chad admitted that he had been diagnosed with HIV. Life was over for him. I felt a knot form in the pit of my stomach. Instinctively, I pulled my hand back. I knew that the disease couldn't be transmitted through touch, and I felt so ashamed. Tears came to my eyes. Chad lamented that he had never gotten tested and had been living carelessly, getting cheap tattoos, rarely being sober. Now that was all over. Everyone would reject him. I was about to console him, but then... Oh no! I remembered that I had given him mouth to mouth. His head had been bleeding after the blow, and I could still remember the metallic taste in my mouth. The thought that I could have become infected horrified me. Chad didn't understand why I was acting like I was. He could only remember that I had pulled him ashore. I told him everything, and his face contorted in shock. That didn't make it easier for me. I got so angry that I started yelling at him. 
Oh, he couldn't party and have fun anymore? Poor thing. What about me? What would happen to my life if I was infected? I couldn't look at him anymore and ran out of the room. Chad called me for several weeks in a row. I didn't pick up the phone. I was so scared. Because of him, my life had turned into a nightmare. I was afraid to do the test and find out the truth. But then I thought about my loved ones and realized that I was behaving as recklessly as Chad. I got tested and had to wait until the next day to find out the results, but no one contacted me. My whole life flashed before my eyes. I started pestering the nurse. I thought that they had lost my sample. It was all just a mistake. But the nurse told me that when you take a preliminary test, a negative result is reported immediately. If you're not informed immediately, then the test is positive. It's sent out for an additional test and then the diagnosis is privately reported. The next few days were the worst of my life. When the doctor called me and set up an appointment, I already knew that I was doomed. I had HIV. I felt exhausted. I was no longer scared or offended. I just didn't feel anything anymore. I looked at the photo again and again, realizing that my life was now divided into before and after. It felt like there was no after. I could only think about what I lost and cried nonstop. In addition to treatment, I was prescribed sessions with a psychologist. It didn't help. My depression got worse. I locked myself in, refused medicine, stopped eating. I thought it was the end for me, but Chad called me again. He asked to meet up, and I didn't really want to go, but I went. He had changed a lot. He had lost a lot of weight and looked exhausted. He told me that he hadn't been taking medicine either. He thought he deserved to suffer. After all, he had infected me. He asked if I could forgive him. That was the only thing he needed. I saw how tortured he was, and I started to cry. I thought about that cursed day. He had been so reckless on the pier. He knew that jumping wasn't allowed. If he had just cared more about his physical safety, then none of this would have happened. I didn't want to admit it, but I was the one who had allowed him to jump. I was so attracted to him that I had been fantasizing about saving him. When he started sinking, it was my chance. I wanted this. When Chad came up to me, I burst into tears and hugged him. He was stunned, but leaned into me. Suddenly, he kissed me. He asked for one thing, forgiveness. He wanted me to forgive him. I couldn't answer and just looked into his eyes. He started to cry. We had just kissed, and he was crying. Everything was mixed up. I started having a panic attack. I began to run away. Chad was too weak to keep up with me. He just watched me for a long time. After that, I decided to start therapy. It wasn't going to cure me, but it would allow me to live a full life. To be honest, deep down, I probably had forgiven Chad. I just hadn't told him. It tormented me. I decided to share my story on the internet to support those living with this disease. I felt that I was saving lives again, but there was one life I couldn't save. I've never told anyone about this before, but two days ago, I was woken up by a phone call. It was an unknown number. I picked it up. It was a policeman. He told me that my friend Chad had passed away. My breath caught, and I almost dropped the phone. My voice was trembling. I asked how it happened. Why was he calling me? I wasn't ready to hear the truth. The policeman said that he was reading Chad's farewell note. Then, the note was handed to me. Chad had written that the day on the pier was both the worst and the best in his life. He realized that he loved me and would never forgive himself for what he had done to me. He was very grateful that I had given him another six months of life when I pulled him out of the water, but he was tired of waiting for the inevitable and decided to take matters into his own hands. In the last line, he asked me for forgiveness. At that moment, I burst into tears. I felt infinitely miserable and remembered our kiss. It was a farewell kiss. I realized that he had known what he wanted to do with himself. He had planned everything, and my forgiveness was so important to him. I really had forgiven him, but it was too late. In a way, I felt guilty. 
I lost the will to live again. I hope for your support. And thanks for listening.